All right, what's up, everybody? Willis here. We are back with another Throne and Liberty video. Got some news for you guys today regarding some new updates, as well as a statement from Throne and Liberty regarding the botting situation. Um, be sure to hit that like button, guys. Drop a like on the video. Still running the Gold Edition giveaway. If you're not aware, there is an edition in the game called the Gold Edition down at the bottom here or the gold celebration pack, you get these cool skins. All you gotta do is, yeah, just support the video with a like, make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment. I normally pick the winners every single Sunday. So yeah, uh, let's jump into it. So yeah, it still looks like there's no Halloween event in the game. Um, they did say it was gonna be sometime in October. I'm pretty sure we will be getting the Halloween event because like I said in my last video, they mentioned it was going to be a global event. So obviously the battle pass, I think, ends in around a week. So we'll probably be seeing it when the battle pass ends. That's what I'm assuming. Um, yeah. So check it out. One of my friends actually mentioned this to me yesterday, but I only just realized it when I saw this Reddit post. Uh, massive shout out to Deadly Pie 18 If you guys are not aware, Saradoma Island, I like to call it the, uh, the Jurassic Park Island. It's basically this big island here in the bottom right. Um, it's an open dungeon, which means you can go there and you can farm enemies. It's pretty difficult if you don't have a group. And at nighttime, it turns into world PvP. So there is actually a secret. Well, I wouldn't really call it secret. It's just not many people know about it. You can go there and there will be a quest event. And there's a bunch of, I guess, chests around the map that can spawn. And they have a chance to give you dimensional contract tokens and the abyssal contract tokens. No, obviously the dimensional contract tokens this is pretty huge because this is for the co-op dungeons as you know you only get 900 of these per day uh being able to go to this island and actually just grab one and get some extra uh dungeon runs is pretty cool so the way it works is the event occurs every two hours someone has made a little handy map here as you can see which shows the locations of pretty much all the chests they have found once again, this will only work when it's on nighttime at PvP. And it says chests will spawn every five minutes, always starting with the small size chests. And these chests will range from 300 to 600 to 900 of the currencies, which is pretty crazy. Now you're probably thinking, hey, I'm probably just going to go there and get some chests, right? No. So most of the time, there probably will be guilds defending these chests. If you're on a server where the guild basically runs the server, I'm pretty sure most top guilds are doing this, just defending the chests. The chest has a chance to be small or medium. And the only downside is only one player can pick it up. So once the chest is spawned, it will have a barrier, preventing any player from interacting with it for 12 seconds. When it's over, you'll see the barrier wearing off and you can open the chest. Only the person who opens the chest receives the reward. To counter a player, only CC abilities prevent the interaction. If you decide to hit a player opening a chest, he will simply still open it. So if you see someone open it, you need to stun them to stop it. This is what it looks like. It's got like a red beacon and it also spawns on the map, as you can see. And here it shows the actual loot of opening up the chest. This guy got 600 dimensional contract tokens and someone got 900 abyssal contract tokens. Once again, only the person who opens the chest will receive the reward. So if you are in a party, nobody else will get the reward. So it's probably best you go around and you share these chests. But yeah, just a pretty cool event on Saradoma Island if you haven't tried it out yet. This game has reinvigorated my love for MMORPGs. I can fully agree with this. I really haven't had this much fun in an MMO in a very long time. I want to say the most fun I've had in an MMO before this was probably, I want to say New World or maybe even Lost Ark. So yeah, it's pretty nice just to have like a MMO that everyone's playing again, just having a ton of fun. How to ruin a game with bots. Yeah, the botting situation was pretty bad, but thankfully Throne and Liberty have addressed this and I'll be going over that in a sec. But if you're not aware, a lot of servers are having some major botting issues where, yeah, um, as you can see here, this player is just following sort of like a, um, I guess like a multi-box and just going around claiming the bosses. It's very unfortunate, but yeah, in MMOs, it just happens. But yeah, honestly, we need to just figure this out because the anti-cheat is not doing its job. And this is just very unfun for anyone being on a server that has bots. 
the bots have arrived at Burkant. I'm assuming that's the name of the server. And yes, look at them all in the default gear. But thankfully, Throne and Liberty posted this um, today. They are tackling the bots. So today we enacted a set of bans against accounts suspected of operating bots within Throne and Liberty. We'll continue to monitor activity and take action against any bad actors intent on negatively impacting the experience of our players. Maintaining a fair and equal playing environment for all players is our top priority. We appreciate your understanding and support as we work to uphold the integrity of our games. But yeah, W devs, finally, they're sort of listening to us. I think this has been the first actual update where they're actually tackling something that's an issue. I went ahead and took a look at the Steam charts to see if there was any major dips in players since they did this, but I'm assuming it's a ongoing thing where they're just tackling it slowly. But yeah, judging from, I guess, the time that they did it, they either did it yesterday or today. So I was kind of just seeing like how many players would have like dropped off. But yeah, I can't really see any significant huge drop offs in the player base, at least. Because obviously when you ban a bunch of bots, there's obviously like a big dip in the player base. But yeah, it looks like the average amount of players over the last week has been around 220,000 players. Not counting the console players, of course. But yeah, to finish up the video, guys, I wanted to go over, I guess, a patch, which is, I guess, being rolled out within, I guess, the end of this month for the Korean version of the game. So if you're not aware, there is a Korean version of the game, and obviously there is a global version of the game. The Korean version of the game came out last year in December. Obviously, they're quite like far ahead compared to the global launch. It'd be nice if the game came out in all regions at the same time, but obviously it is a Korean game. It is obviously built first for Korea, and then we sort of just get the global launch. But yeah, it looks like they're bringing out a new artifact system in the game, which is pretty interesting. A lot of people said it reminds them, I guess, of, I think they said the Pi system in Blade and Soul. I never played Blade and Soul, so I have no idea what this Pi system is. But yeah, long story short, the artifact system is a new equipment that will provide you uh, stat bonuses, set effects, and even new skills. Um, they're similar to other gear, but obviously they offer additional customization and power, obviously, to your character. Now, the update's going to come out on October 30th, and this will introduce this system to the game, allowing players to equip and use artifacts for added effects and abilities. Looks pretty cool. It looks like you sort of build an artifact, and obviously it gives you certain bonuses, set pieces, all that cool stuff. As you can see here, you get stat effects, you get set effects, and obviously these skill effects. They're also adding a thing called the Nebula PvP Battlegrounds. Now, this is a permanent player versus player arena where players can battle against each other and collect artifacts. The Battleground will provide a competitive environment where players can not only fight but also farm new artifacts, making it a critical area for both PvP enthusiasts and those looking to collect artifacts. As well, apparently there's going to be some weapon balance adjustments that they've been waiting for, and obviously some equipment performance adjustments. Now, the Korean version is getting this on October 30th. Like I said, I don't know if they're going to update our version at the same time. We're probably running like different like balancing patches, I would assume. I don't know how this stuff works, but if there's a weapon, I guess, balancing fix on Korea, would we get it as well? I would assume so. So obviously stop the same problems from happening but like i said i guess they need to see what's happening in our version of the game before they start giving us early patches from korea unless it is something super game breaking but yeah you're probably wondering why am i even going over the korean like patches and stuff like that it's something i just want to put into my videos i know we're probably not going to get it for a very long time like some of the stuff i showed off like obviously korea's getting the the raids the 12 person raids and stuff like that we probably won't be getting that for a very long time. I just wanted to like, I guess, keep you guys updated either way and just, I guess, get you guys excited maybe for what is to come for the global launch. Because for me, my biggest concern was there wasn't really that much, I want to say end game, end game PVE content apart from the open dungeons and I guess the world bosses maybe, but a lot of that still is very PVP oriented. So yeah, I guess that was just my, my main concern. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, if you want a chance to win the gold edition or the gold version of the game, which comes with some awesome skins, 
the morphs as well. I don't know if you guys want to win the silver version either. I guess you can pick. You get this cool little rabbit morph. Pretty nice. Um, drop a like on the video. Smash that like button. Leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel with bell notifications turned on. Um, once again, we pick the winners every single Sunday. So be sure you're in my Discord to see if you've won. And with that being said, I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.